guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Sell Me Your House. A couple of years ago my DH and I bought a house from the city council. We had seen it and we loved everything about it in the neighborhood. Inspection showed that apart from the central heating boiler, everything was in good order. We still needed to replace the central heater boiler. We also renovated the bathroom and stairs and we placed a new kitchen. Between then and now we have invested money in our home. Amongst other things we placed solar panels, renovated the front and back garden and renovated our downstairs toilet. For reference, we have lived here for around 6 years now and we have no intention on moving. Apart from the fact that we pumped a lot of money in the house, we love the neighborhood, our neighbors and the fact that we are close to family and friends. The way the council sold houses went as follows. The house was up for sale for 6 weeks. If you were interested, you could schedule a visit with the real estate agent, place a bid if you wanted and then after the 6 week the city council would look at all the bids and see who offered the most. Two weeks ago I was home when a lady rang the doorbell. She introduced herself and told me that when the house came up for sale all those years ago she and her husband were interested. They could see the potential but their bid was rejected. She was enthused about how it looked now, from what she could see, and how beautiful the garden was, how wonderful the solar panels were and such. So I thanked her for her compliments and waited for the reason why she rang the doorbell. She told me that since they had more money saved, she and her husband wanted to know if we were interested in selling them the house. I told her that we were not interested. She started whining and gave an offer and I told her the same, not interested at all. More whining ensued and she made a new offer. I kindly drew the line and said that she can offer all she want, we love living here and we want to enjoy our home with the family we've built in it. Then I told her that I had things to do, wished her a good day and closed the door. I had barely turned around when she started ringing the doorbell continuously. So I opened the door and asked her what she needed to say. She told me this, almost verbatim, you need to sell us this house. You have lived here for some years now. My husband and children deserve a nice house like this. I gave you two offers that are very reasonable. It's our turn now so sell us the house. We want to live here. I told this woman that her offers were laughable. She gave two offers while we knew that we could ask for double the price and get that still. She lowballed. I reiterated that we were not interested and would not sell the house. I asked her to leave and closed the door again. Like before she started ringing the doorbell like a madwoman. After trying to ignore it, I ripped open the front door and shouted in her face for her to get lost. We are not interested. Even if we were, I would not sell my house to her since she's acting like a spoiled brat. I wouldn't want my neighbors to deal with her spoiled attitude. I told her that she doesn't need think about trying to bully us into moving and to get the f asterisk ck away or I would call the police. This time I slammed the door to get the message across. She stayed, screaming at the door that we have to sell the house to her and walked around a bit before leaving. I did send a message in our streets group app about her. People have said to keep an eye out for her. My DH was stunned when I told him this as this is not a normal thing in our country to do. She has been seen once or twice but has not caused problems for us or anyone else. The next story is titled I finally encountered one. Today I was at the grocery store and had a gentleman strike up a conversation with me. After nice pleasantries, he asked if had $5 so he could get something to eat. I said sorry, I don't have any cash on me. So he asked if I could get him something to eat, I said sure but you only have 5 minutes cause my Uber was coming. And I said only 3 items. He came back with 10 items, 4 of which were gallon drinks, a $12 pack of ham and loaf of bread, 4 varieties of cookies and ho-hos kinda things. I was shocked, and said that's a bit too much. I'll get you the lunch meat and bread and a drink. He proceeded to yell at me and call me some very nasty names. I watched his tirade in disbelief and he told the cashier NVM and walked away. I just chuckled to myself, waited for my Uber inside the store, cause he was outside. I'm still shocked. The next story is titled Aida for having my neighbor's car towed after she boxed in my fiancé's car in our driveway? My fiancé, 30F, and I, 29M, barely moved into this house a few months ago. 
The first week we noticed a car parked right on our driveway which obviously didn't belong. When we went outside the lady who lived next door asked if this was okay. Her house is right at the corner of the street and there's no driveway. She said the last owner was fine with letting her park there so she hoped we wouldn't mind. Our driveway is big enough for two cars, so we said for now it was okay. After our son was born and I had to go back to work we decided to buy a second car so it's easier for her to get around. All three cars don't fit so we had to tell our neighbor she can't park there anymore. Ever since it's become a whole issue. Once she was parked behind me when I was leaving early in the morning, so I had to go banging on her door at 6 am. She had the audacity to be mad for waking her up. I reminded her she can't park there again so we thought she got the message. Second time was when we were on our way home from the park. She was already parked there so we would have had to park behind her. I went to go knock and she said she was just putting her groceries away since we weren't home, and the driveway is closer. This last time when it happened my car wasn't working so my brother came to pick me up early. My fiancé had to take our son to his four-month appointment but the lady's damn car was parked right behind her so there was no way for her to pull out the driveway. She told me the neighbor wasn't answering the door. It got late so she had to reschedule his appointment, I came home after and called the cops to come deal with this because I was just so tired. Since they couldn't reach her, they did end up towing her car. Once she found out she was at my door angry. So, she was a few blocks down at a friend's house which is why she didn't answer but now she says she's stressed because she doesn't have the money to get her car back and it's our fault. Since both our cars were there, she assumed we were home and if anything, we would have used my car to pull out of the driveway. My neighbor kept complaining how ducked out we are going to that extreme making her lose her car when she absolutely needs it. We have just ignored her since then but now every time we're stepping out, she glares right at us. I've had my car towed before too, so we know it's a nightmare of a fee to get it out of impound. That's why I ask if I'm the a-hole. It's been almost a week since this happened with still no sign of her car parked on the street so obviously, she hasn't got it back yet. Comment said not the a-hole. You asked nicely, she ignored you. You pounded on her door on repeated occasions not so nicely, and she ignored that you didn't want her parking there. The next logical step was to get the car towed, because she wasn't getting the message. Bet she won't park there once she has her car back. Problem solved. Also if the doctor charged you for an office visit that you had to cancel last minute, I would send the bill to her too. Don't expect her to pay it, but at least to realize that she is costing you for being ta. Another comment said in my opinion, you gave her too many chances. None of this was your fault, you were 100% clear with her from the beginning. Your neighbor has some seriously skewed way of rationalizing this. Don't let it rub off on you. Not the a-hole. The next story is titled Park So You're Blocking Both Sides of Our Driveway? The Setup I spent my teenage years living in a small town of around 3,000 to 4,000 people. My parents had purchased a house near the downtown area, just a literal block away from the bank and all the mom and pop shops. It was very convenient except for one weekend out of the entire year. For one weekend in October, this town had a very well-known festival. Our small community ballooned from 3 to 4,000 people living there to easily over 30k people invading for just that one weekend. There were booze, a carnival, a bus tour that took people out to see historical sites, a play production, and vendors everywhere selling homemade goods and food. Parking was a nightmare, tm. No street was safe. No lawn was safe. It wasn't unusual for me to walk outside Saturday morning and find vehicles parked on our side lawn. We were very close to the main action, and some of the vendors asked very nicely if they could park there for convenience. My dad was pretty chill about it. If you asked, he always gave permission as he understood how hairy it was. We also had a two-car garage with four spaces for parking. Two outside the garage, and two between those spaces and the sidewalk. Those two were split by a median that had a spindly tree in the center. My parents would park their cars in the garage and offer the four free spaces to friends and family. And almost always we'd get elderly and or handicapped people asking if they could park there, to which my father always said yes. In fact, he started giving people our number to call and reserve a spot for free. Now for the actual deets. One year someone decided to park in front of the median to our driveway. It wasn't a large car, I suppose they thought they could fit there without issue. However, the front and back bumper were blocking both sides of the driveway. A few of our handicapped friends arrived early and had to drive over the curb a bit to get in. 
My father wasn't happy about it, but getting the car towed wasn't really possible. As I said, this was a tiny town, and the cops had their hands full. Plus, getting a tow truck into that area would have been very difficult, considering three of the four streets by my house, we were on a corner, were blocked by the festival. Nothing to be done about it. At some point whoever owned the car returned to it and left while we weren't aware. The next year, it happened again. Not sure if it was the same car. But again, it was blocking the driveway on both sides. I walked outside that morning to greet the vendors I knew would be on our side lawn and then go get funnel cakes and there that car was. This time it was there, all day. My father was really unhappy. We had friends and family and folks who had reserved spots having to curb check every time they wanted in or out. We figured they wouldn't be back on Sunday, as they hadn't been last year. But also, we weren't sure if it was the same person. My dad, however, decided to put a plan in action, just in case. Sure enough, the next day there's that car again, blocking our driveway. I sighed and shook my head and ran off to get the morning's coffee and funnel cakes for the family. On returning, my father was putting his plan into action. The night before, he'd taken our cars out of the garage and parked them on the now empty streets. Soon as he saw that car had parked itself into the median again, he gleefully parked both cars a fraction of an inch before their front and rear bumpers. Then he got himself a cooler of beer, cracked one open, and sat on our front porch in a rocking chair to watch. It was a really nasty, cold, rainy day. So thankfully we didn't have any reservations from friends to park. My dad spent the better part of the day watching the world go by, drinking beer, and waiting. Eventually the couple who owned the car returned. They got into their car and turned it on to get the defroster working. And sat there for a good 15 minutes probably assessing their situation. The driver gets out, checks the front bumper, then the back. My dad is grinning from ear to ear, but he doesn't call out to the guy. Finally, he leaves, his wife or girlfriend or whatever stays in the passenger seat. When he returns, he has a cop with him. Now, this is a small town, the cops all know my father, he's a local mechanic. Also, there's an ordinance about drinking alcohol in public, so dad had to swiftly stash his beer and close the cooler. The cop just shook his head as he observed the situation. I'm pretty sure he was laughing internally, or maybe screaming since the festival was always hard on the local police force. He approaches my father. Hey, dad. How's it going today? Good day to you, officer. Just enjoying the scenery on this rainy day. Look, I get that you're unhappy they parked where they did. But I'm going to need you to move your vehicles. I just want an apology from them, officer and to promise they never do it again. The cop just sighed heavily. I'm sure they are very sorry, dad. Please move your cars for me? I'd be really appreciative. So, dad takes his time doing so. The guy didn't get out of his car or roll down his window the whole time while this is going on and as soon as the cars are moved, he takes off. But not without first getting a ticket from the officer. We never had anyone attempt to park in the median ever again. But dad still kept our cars parked on the street just in case. The next story is titled Who Knew a Dryer Could Ignite Such Rage in a Person? We'll occasionally get some guests who have stay at the hotel for weeks or months at a time. I find these guests are often the most needy and entitled, not all mind you. They expect us to bend over backwards for them since they're dropping tons of money on the room acting as if it's an apartment. I was working the NAS shift a couple nights ago. Around 11.30 pm to 12 am a guest, one that has been with us for the month of November, came by front desk asking for change for the coin-operated washer, dryer. Gave him his change and there were no problems. He goes down to the washer and dryer and 20-ish minutes later he returns to front desk. Guest. For duck's sakes. The damn dryer isn't working yet again. Can I use the large dryer, or do you even know how to use it? Me. I'm sorry I just started my shift. I wasn't aware it was broken but sure you can use that one. I unlock our laundry room and let him use our industrial size dryer we use for linen. At this point, he goes on a full-blown adult tantrum about the dryer. Swearing every second word as if he's Gordon Ramsay on Hell's Kitchen. Guest. You guys told me the dryer is fixed. F-seeking thing is still broken. It's been like this for a week. Ducking ridiculous. I was just listening to him rant as I'm not even phased by his screaming because I'm so used to being yelled at by customers' guests. After a couple minutes of his continued screaming he turns around and goes, are you even going to say something? 
like show some compassion for duck's sakes. I didn't say anything because I don't engage in conversation or try to speak with people in this anger state. Plus, I already apologized and offered a solution. Nor am I going to tolerate someone belittle me for such a petty situation. He goes back up to his room mumbling something about how if his clothes aren't dry in 20 minutes he'll be pissed. Sir, I think you've already crossed the pissed off threshold. He comes back down and grabs his clothes and stops by front desk. At this point his rage is at an all-time high. He's swearing and slamming his hands on the desk. Guest. You guys need to get your crap together. I have to be awake at 6 a.m. and because of your broken dryer it's now 1 a.m. and my clothes are just finished. Me. I'm sorry. I wasn't even aware our dryer has been broke this past week. Guest. Bullshit. I've told you guys several times. You could have helped me out. What? Are you gonna say you have other things to do? I own a hotel. I know what you guys do behind front desk, you're sleeping UFC king idiot. I didn't say a word, just smiled and continued my work. Dude, you've got some serious anger issues if a dryer is setting you off like this. If you had to be up so early why are you doing your laundry at midnight? Plus we let you use our linen dryer why are you still so pissed? He didn't even try to listen to my explanation. That guy has got some serious self-evaluating to do. I think my lack of engaging in an argument with him made him even more mad. I'm very convinced he was just looking for a fight and I didn't give him one. Hilarious and quite satisfying seeing him rage like a moron while I just stood there listening. The next story is titled that won't make the charge reverse faster, sir. Okay so I work in a small hotel in a tourist destination in the south, I'm a front desk supervisor. I also want to clarify that I fully understand the guest's frustration, and I would fix it if I could. A small backstory before I get into the behavior of this guest. Last night this guest was having trouble checking in, as his card kept declining. My night auditor tried to run it a few times and tried two other cards before it went through for only one night's room and tax, so he was set to check out today. Apparently this guest is supposed to be getting married tomorrow. My night auditor told me this morning the guest was having trouble authorizing his card, and he was to check out today. Housekeeping came to me this morning while I was making a bagel in our breakfast area and said there was a guest waiting for me at the desk long story short. It was the guy from last night, and he was upset. He showed me his bank statement and it had several pending charges for his room. That absolutely sucks, but he had my night auditor run it so many times with his permission. I looked at the system and was able to conclude to him that it was the authorization he was seeing, and not the actual charge, which will be able to clear up in a few days, and apologized for it, this doesn't typically happen. He got irate and started off on me about how he's getting married tomorrow and we have $500 of his money being held, hostage, and that my night shift employee was a, insert expletive here, that doesn't know how to do his job, and that he wants the charges off now. And he needs to be here another night, then got upset when I said we'd have to run the card again, because it has to authorize before we check him in. I explained further that they weren't charges and that I personally cannot reverse the authorization myself, that it has to run its course and clear out, I can't make it clear out any faster than it's going to. This is how our billing system operates and clears out authorizations he started getting even more irate and started threatening to sue us, and wanted someone higher than me. I told him she wasn't in today, and handed him one of her cards. He was yelling so loud that my kitchen staff, housekeeping, and guests came out to look, my kitchen staff and housekeeping wanted to make sure he wasn't going to come over my desk, he was that irate. He said that he is getting married tomorrow again, and that a few days I isn't gonna cut it. I explained again that I cannot reverse the authorization. He then hit me with the crown jewel of his rant. I work for the richest man in this city and he can have this place shut down. That. Still I isn't going to make the authorization reverse sooner sir. He retorted again about his lawsuit and left. If you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.